creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. I'm so glad you joined me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn how to decorate cakes to look like animals. We'll learn how to keep a craft room, sewing room, or workshop more organized and learn what to do if an unwelcome wildlife animal gets in your home. One of my guests today is Emily Taytak, and she's the Assistant Culinary Specialist with Wilton Brands in Woodridge, Illinois. Emily's going to demonstrate how to use fondant to create a variety of woodland animals, including a fox, an owl, and a raccoon, and they're all adorable. Another guest is Patty Wade, and she owns and operates an event planning business called Wade & Associates. Patty knows how important it is to be able to locate items quickly for an upcoming event, and she'll share some tips and tricks that can alleviate some of the chaos and make life easier and less stressful. She lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Well, what's the first thing you would think of doing if a wild animal happened to get into your home? Ray Pauly is my first guest, and he says you need to immediately take charge with a calm, clear head, which is easier said than done. He has several suggestions that might come in handy someday. Ray lives in Hondo, New Mexico. Ray, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we've talked in the past about songbirds and about hummingbirds in particular. And uh, when you said we were going to talk about how to get animals or birds out of our houses. I, at first I thought, well, that sounds kind of silly, but you know, I remember going in a department store here in town and everybody was just flittering all over the store because there was a bird in there. <laughs> right. And I think they were scaring the bird more than anything else. And you said that's really what happens a lot of time. It's just that's total commotion. Exactly. Because, and I've even seen people get squirrels to eat from their fingers and then even oh. want to bring the squirrel into the house. I mean, oh, that's uh -huh. not real swift, but still that happens sometimes. Uh -huh. But if in any case an animal gets in the house, the animal panics. The animal does not it's want out to of be its, there. Uh -huh, out of There's, its element. The smells are totally different uh -huh. and uh, it's in a, a panic. And then usually the person panics mm -hmm. because the animal is in the house and they don't have a plan. I've even seen this in zoos where a small animal will get out of an enclosure and it's just pandemonium and oh. it shouldn't be in a zoo for goodness well, sake. Well, no, you wouldn't think so. You'd think that everyone would be prepared there. Yes, Is right. it harder to get a big animal out or a bird? It's harder to get a bird out unless you keep a few things uh, in mind. And this is what a person needs to uh, be uh, concerned about. Mm -hmm. First of all, don't panic. Stay uh, calm. Stay calm. It's easy to say, <laughs> but when, when yeah. it happens, it's going to be difficult. And if there are any children in the house, they are going to want to get into the mix. They like the excitement. <laughs> the kids have to stay out. They have to uh -huh. back off. And you say close uh, all other doors like right. to other rooms. Close the doors mm -hmm. to as close as you can keep the animal in as uh, close a confinement to the exit door as mm -hmm. possible. Leave the door open. open. Uh -huh. A lot of people will close the door. And then you're the locked in there with it. Uh -huh. Right. So I'm trying to cover the bases where I have, uh, I've just rolled my eyes sometimes. Uh, <laughs> and so you keep the door open, block it open if necessary. And the door should open as close to the wall as possible so the animal can't get behind it. Oh, uh -huh. uh, And the, the most handy thing that I've ever seen used, and I use it uh, whenever I have to move animals of a small size, say from uh, a coyote-sized animal down, uh -huh. is a corn broom. This Why is the corn? handiest thing. And they're becoming a little hard to get, it seems, uh -huh. anymore. But they used to be... Uh, broom the, corn. Right, mm -hmm. broom corn. And they are inexpensive. Mm -hmm. And if a person forgets for a moment and hits uh, the animal, it's soft, so it's not going it's to hurt. injure the uh -huh. animal. And if you need to pin the animal toward a wall, uh, the fabric, the uh, bristles. bristles are very soft. Mm -hmm. And when I emphasize a corn broom, what I'm saying is don't use a plastic broom because a oh. plastic broom usually has a, a plastic bar that the bristles have been inserted uh -huh. into and that can injure the animal. Oh. Uh, so a corn broom has never been improved on as a technique for getting an animal. And also, if we were to injure them, that makes them even harder to get out or to maneuver. Exactly, uh -huh. right. 
an animal normally is going to run to the wall. Mm -hmm. And what you have to do is keep the animal between you and the door that you want to get the animal uh -huh. out. The animal wants to get out too, but the animal's just not going to recognize that open uh, doorway uh -huh. necessarily. So when the animal... This is a wall. This is a wall. And this is a bear. And this is uh -huh. a, a bear, yes, little guy. Uh, that's about a raccoon sized animal. Mm -hmm. And they are, if you stay off to the side, the animal uh, that is between, uh, keep the animal between you and the wall, the animal is going to follow the uh -huh. wall. Just keep working here. And so think ahead as to where the door is. Uh -huh. Like if this was the opening for the door. Right. You would, uh, you would hopefully, the animal would just move that direction. And if you have to slow him down, from making a wrong turn, you can use the broom to press oh, down on uh -huh. the animal. And if the animal turns to bite, it's not going to injure itself oh. <laughs> by biting out down on, this, uh, uh, on these uh, corn fabrics. And here. you've got a long enough handle, hopefully it won't bite you. That's right. And mm -hmm. that's the other thing. It's a mm -hmm. good point. You have to stay far enough away so that when the animal turns to defend itself, it's not going to bite the person. Because uh -huh. sometimes people will think that because the animal is easy to get along with outside that it's your buddy, uh -huh. it's not. It's not. When it's in a panic, if you grab the animal, uh, it's uh, very likely going to turn around and bite. Mm -hmm. And you brought the smaller size, would this be right. for birds? That or would for be something? more for birds. Uh -huh. uh, this big broom works very good for uh, 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 interfering Bigger with animal. bird flight. Oh, uh -huh. And for birds, in fact, uh, animals in general, well, let me back this up, birds, it's a good idea to close any of the blinds to make the room darker so that the uh, door opening is lighter. The light. Uh -huh. That's what the bird is going to go toward. Uh -huh. For mammals, you almost have to do the reverse. They prefer a dark space, so if you brighten the lights uh, in the room, uh, that uh, will help shoo, shoo the animal out. toward uh -huh. the, the doorway. Uh -huh. Once in a while, a skunk gets in. Oh, yeah. And uh, that is also cause for alarm. But a skunk is not very inclined to spray. If a skunk can get away without spraying, the skunk is very happy. Oh. So, and some skunks are more hair trigger than others. And they're not very fearful of people. So that means you can get fairly close to them without hmm. a big panic. And uh -huh. you gently urge the skunk toward the doorway as well. I think we well. panic more because we're afraid the skunk is going to spray. Right. Keep in mind that the skunk doesn't like its smell any more than we do. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> if they get a little of that on them, they have to live with it for about <laughs> three or four days. Just I like had never we do. thought about that. Right. <laughs> and so skunks are going to be kind of, uh, in general, reluctant to, to spray, which gives you an edge because then you can kind of crowd the skunk uh -huh. toward the doorway. And, get it and this is where pets really need to be kept out of the Pets picture. Pets and kids. Right, uh -huh. because if you have anything that you can't control, like a kid or a, a pet, uh -huh. that interferes, uh -huh. the skunk can spray, and then... You've got uh, a worse mess You've got a now. problem. <laughs> well, Ray, thank you for telling us about something that you, you wouldn't even think we'd need to talk about, but I bet if people have had this happen, they're glad to have some advice now on what to do next time. Right, thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Patty, thank you so much for being here. I'm really looking forward to this segment because I love to organize things. <laughs> if you looked at my office some days, you might not think that. But, <laughs> but there's such a, a pleasure in knowing that you have things organized. You can find what you're looking for. And you feel the same way, don't you? Absolutely. I think we are less stressed if our lives are organized, less chaos around us, we can think more clearly. And I think there's a lot of research that has gone into that. But today, hopefully, I can show you some of the ways that have been effective for me and some of my clients. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Notebooks. Um, I love notebooks, yes. too. <laughs> and as an event planner, my life revolves around notebooks, but also in my personal life. And this mm -hmm. is one of the ones that I'd like to share with you is that we have several binders in our personal life. And in this case, this oh. one is for our house. Oh, it's labeled. Uh -huh. And so we label them. 
And in the front here, we put all sorts of paint chips for every room. Every time oh, we paint, we make sure uh -huh. that the paint chip goes in there. So if we have to do touch-ups, touch we have it. Oh, that's a great and then idea. When we purchase things for the for our house, whether it's a recliner or furniture or barbecue grills or whatever, mm -hmm. we always put uh, one of the books Those inside a sleeve. Those use and care booklets or yes. the warranties or yes. whatever. That's a and good idea. And it's really idea. important because if your recliner, say, for example, uh -huh. breaks down, you have to have it repaired. Uh -huh. Where's the warranty and all uh -huh. that? Well, you'll know where to go because you'll these plastic sleeves, you just drop all your booklets inside mm -hmm. of them. It's easy to go to and easy accessible. That and you have is, all your information. I don't have mine so, in a notebook, but I do keep yeah. those. But I think maybe this would be easier because I could see. I have. I just yes. have to dump everything out of a folder. And you just Good organize idea. it in there. It's so much easier for you, and you'll uh -huh. love it. We have also categories like outside for all the stuff, our patio furniture, uh -huh. things like that. So anyway... A notebook is perfect for it that. It sure is. That's good. Now, this is another idea that, you know, everybody always tells us, if your house is going to burn, make sure you get those important papers like uh -huh. your your uh, your documents, like your birth certificates, passports, mm -hmm. and all. Medical reports Yes, and, reports and we take things. the time to put them in file cabinets, but can you grab <laughs> can that you file know? cabinet? No. So what Excuse I do me. is we have these type of folders, and we keep our, our most important papers in there. And so if something happened, if, if there's an emergency, we just, just grab it grab and go. grab this folder yeah, and go. Yeah, so That's these are really idea. valuable, and they're easy to pick up. So in this day, in this day and age, every, these containers are everywhere. Uh -huh. And you should not all, have to pay a lot of money for these containers. No. All sizes, mm -hmm. all shapes, some with lids, some without lids. Yeah. And so as an event planner, I have all these categories that I'm working on for my client. And so I have these, these type of little re receptacles there where I put all the stuff that I'm working on, I just throw it in there and I know that and that's handy this. and I have to work on it. Uh -huh. So these are really easy. But these are also an example that you can use, like, say, for example, your hall closet. You've got perfumes, you've got toilet paper, you've got soap and everything else. Uh -huh. Just simply put them in containers. In one like place. Like items, uh -huh. put them in there, and they're easy. They're not falling all over your cabinet, this so it's really easy. because you can carry it. I like the ones it that is. have the holes there. Uh -huh. And another wonderful idea that you can use not only for organizing are these little um, receptacles here mm -hmm. these Basket are actually for uh, for flatware napkins and everything for events but you can use them where you can put flowers in them for centerpieces you can use them for organization um, for anything inside like uh -huh. by your telephone you oh, put yeah. your scratch pads and your and your pencils Pans. and all and in my case, I brought this to show you an example of what I did for the bathroom. Our combs were always all over, and <laughs> obviously with all this hair that I have, I have combs <laughs> and brushes and all. But it's very easy, and it keeps it very tidy. Uh -huh. And so these are wonderful to have. And it's also handy, too, if you're in a hurry to pack. Mm -hmm. You know that all of your toiletries or cosmetics or yes. whatever is in one place. You're not, you're not hunting for uh -huh. everything. So right. these work out really good. And some additional ones is, this is this an example of some software. You get some software in these wonderful containers, mm -hmm. and instead of throwing it away, keep them. And you can use them to pack your jewelry in if you're, if you're traveling. You can use it to keep odds and ends things, like everything from extra pencils and so on. So be creative, uh -huh. however, but don't throw don't it away. Don't throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> We're recycling that way, yeah. too. Yeah. Now, what about all the odds and ends over there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are some examples. Um, we had some candies came in these two. Uh huh. Gum came in these two <laughs> right here. But you can use them for everything from rubber bands to even Cotton these balls. little plastic mm -hmm. ones. Use them when you travel. They're really good for traveling, but they're also good in the house so that you can put everything together. You're not losing it. This right here has blades for our cutting. Um, mm -hmm. Our, our knives, or, yeah, uh -huh. the exacto knives and all. These right here had a brand of lemonade in them. Oh, uh -huh. and so um, instead of throwing them away, I've got pencils and pins in them that I'll I'll put them in containers and take to events. Mm -hmm. It's just easy to transport. Plastic bags, of course, you, you can't replace those. Oh, and love I love these. these little divided containers too, especially if yes. you have lots of little things. Now, normally you'd purchase this in the office supply area, uh -huh. but what I use them for is jewelry. 
And it's very easy to pull the jewelry, whatever you need. Your earrings, so, kind of keep them together yeah. so they actually exactly. match. Or in the kitchen. So, and then um, one of the other things is that these little labels that you can purchase, everybody has clothes in their closet and you look at it and you say, are those the jeans that were the long ones? Are those the jeans that were the loose ones or whatever? <laughs> Use these little labels. They're, they're just sticky labels. Uh -huh. And you put it on the hanger. And then that way you always know exactly, uh -huh. oh, that's the pair of jeans that I want to wear <laughs> or whatever. Or this so, pair doesn't fit anymore. Yeah. Got it. So <laughs> label them and make it easy on yourself. And lastly, one of the things we always, everybody now has laptops. We've got our PCs and everything. Mm -hmm. We've got passwords, user words, mm -hmm. everything. Codes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Simply purchase an address book. And this is an example of just yes. a simple uh -huh. address book. And behind the different categories, put the different names. Mm -hmm. So like my Skype password, I just look under S and there's my Skype password. That's and a all. great idea. And I do know that there are applications uh -huh. that you can have for your computer where you can store uh -huh. those. But to be honest with you, I I'm still that an old-fashioned girl. Me too. <laughs> so I can use I, I use something like that. I think that's a great idea. Well, thank you, Patty. It's it's just amazing if we look at things like you say outside the box mm -hmm. and look at different ways that just common things can be used. Absolutely, make your life easy and fun. <laughs> thank you. Uh -huh. Emily, thank you so much for being with us today. I know we're going to talk about fondant. Yes. And I can remember years and years ago when one of your coworkers came, mm -hmm. and it's when fondant first came out, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, and it was white. And if you wanted colors, of course, you had to just knead the paste yes. colors yes. into it, and it was really hard to work with. Mm -hmm. Well, we actually just came out with our new Decorator Preferred Fondant. It's great because it's softer and it's easier to oh. knead and easier to work with. And it comes in white, but it also comes in a variety of colors. So you don't have to work that icing color in if you have, you know, if you want a vibrant pink or mm -hmm. black. Or well, that's wonderful. Yes. Uh, we thought we'd start by just showing people because how could you not get excited about working with fondant if we see our little, you call these woodland, woodland creatures. Woodland creatures. Animals. Oh, they're my favorite. I they love really them. They really are. Let's start with the fox. That's That one's my favorite. Yes. The fox is actually what I'll be showing you to do, Ooh, okay. but all of these are on Wilton.com and you uh -huh. have all the step-by-step -step instructions. But and, and so after this, what is the little, is that so, an owl? Yes, we have oh. a little teal owl. That's I cute. love him. And we have a little porcupine over here. Oh. And a bandit or a yeah. raccoon. Raccoon. Yeah. How cute. Yes. Well, these would be the hit at any child's birthday oh, party absolutely. for sure. I couldn't think of a million ways or a million different events uh -huh. I'd bring this to just cause. And we were talking earlier about sororities and fraternities that have animals as mm -hmm. their symbol. This would be great for that them too. That would be a great idea. Uh -huh. I never thought of that. Okay, so this is easier to work with. I'm really glad to yes, hear that. Yes, this is a softer fondant. Mm -hmm. We actually did color to get this orange. We oh. just used a little bit of black and a little bit of orange icing color. Oh, so you created this beautiful this color, color. Yes, uh -huh. we did create, but we have many, many vibrant colors, mm -hmm. so you don't necessarily have to do that mm -hmm. step. So just using my rolling pin, I'm going to roll it like you would pie dough, pie dough. Uh -huh. and or cookie it, dough. So yep. You just kind of roll and turn, and I want to keep it in as much as a circle as possible, but oh. it's not. It's not necessary. It kind of depends on your shape, I guess, too, Absolutely. doesn't it? Absolutely, yes, and the size depends on your shape. I'm going to roll this to about an eighth of an inch thick. This is really much easier than pie dough because pie dough sometimes will tear when you pick it up to yes. move it. And this is really easy to manage. Yes, this is super easy. And I'm rolling it on my fondant mat so you oh. can see it's not sticking. Whereas pie dough, you might put down some flour, flour. Uh -huh. or anything like that. So you don't even need cornstarch or anything on Nothing. this to roll it out. Wow. No. Uh -huh. And that's what's so great about this fondant. It's super soft, super easy to work with. I just love it. I love it, love it. And it wow. tastes. And what I love is the look you get because it's so smooth. Yes. I yes. know people that are professional decorators can use the buttercream icing and and work with it long enough with spatulas and hot water mm -hmm. and smooth it so that it's, but I don't think you can ever get quite the, the smooth surface that you do with fondant. That you do with mm -hmm. fondant, right. It's just so beautiful mm -hmm. and so smooth. Now that's so, like the pizza cutter, doesn't it? Yes, this is a little <laughs> fondant trimmer, but it's uh -huh. exactly like a pizza cutter. I'm just trimming my edges, oh. and I'm going to actually transfer this to my six-inch cake. 
And to do that, just like pie dough, I'm going to oh, roll this onto so my rolling uh -huh. pin. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and my cake has a thin layer of buttercream, so that's going to act like the glue to hold so my So you fondant. do want to put a thin layer on, yes. even if you're using fondant. Yes. Oh, I see. There you go. And then just using my hands or the fondant smoother, I'm just going to smooth it out. Do and you prefer your hands over the smoother? Or it does depends. It Sometimes I think to get the edges, especially on a square cake, super, super smooth and sharp, uh -huh. I like to use the smoother, but it's really whatever you're comfortable, comfortable using. with. Uh -huh. so this wow, looks that is so smooth. It's so pretty so already. So smooth and so fast. You saw how mm -hmm. easy that was. And I'm just going to take my trimmer again and trim it. Mm -hmm. And this fondant can be re-rolled and reused, so keep your scraps. It doesn't get tough like pie dough, you know. No, you as can't long really as you wrap it, it uh -huh. it's perfectly fine. Oh, that's good. Yeah, just wrap it and Don't want to waste anything. Exactly. Or, you know, because your fox cake is going to be such a hit, you'll have some fondant ready to go <laughs> for the next one. Okay, and then from there we're going to make his ears and eyes and his tail and all this again is so we would just re-roll, remold that, re-roll re -roll, it? Yes. Uh -huh. And now, do you have the patterns online? Yes, too? we have the patterns online, so that you just uh -huh. print them out and cut them out. And I have all of them already done because they do have to sit at room temperature for about two days. You want to so let them dry So you want it really out. hard, yes. don't you, and dry. Yes. Okay. So all you're going to do is just add a little bit of water or some icing. It depends on what you'd prefer. And we're just going to assemble Create. our little fox. Uh -huh. So what does the, uh, the water do? The water acts, it acts as your glue. Oh, so it's okay. going to keep. To hold it. Yes. So just using a food safe paintbrush. Don't use one that you use with your <laughs> acrylics or anything. And a little bit goes a long way. We just want this to stick. Okay. All right, and now we'll add his body. Do you want to help me? You can add a piece or two. I'll just hand it to you. Okay. About that. And all of these pretty these much the have, eyes. yes. Uh -huh. And they all have more or less the same shapes. They're just a little different. Uh -huh. You know, the raccoon and the fox both have the beautiful cat eyes. And the owl has the bigger the owl, oh, round yes. Yes. Uh -huh, or oval. Yes. Uh -huh. so. This is an eye. This is an eye, yes. Mm -hmm. So I've got to make sure it goes out like this. <laughs> Be sure and get it in the right place. Right, That's line important. it up before you place it. Because once you kind of place the fondant, it sticks. So make sure to line it up good. first. that's good. That's what you want it oh, to do. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so we'll do his other eye. And I chose, you know, orange and white, but you could do any color. You can have, mm -hmm. if it's... The brown fox? You can do a brown fox. You can even Chocolate. do a whimsical fox and, you know, do them in blue or uh -huh. whatever you'd like. So we'll add his little eyes to these. Thank you. And you can go online and look up your favorite animal, and you, you know you can print out those caricatures Absolutely. of whatever animal, and that really does make it a and it, a cute design. Yes, and super customizable. His tail we'll just kind of put to the side. Oh, it, it doesn't even have there. to get attached. Uh -huh. So I like to put it on a cake board, or I use a cutting board because mm -hmm. I think just the wood is so cute. Or use your favorite, you know crystal plate or whatever oh, you want to use. Uh -huh. And then we'll attach his ears. Just like this. Well, once you get this part done, it really is fast. It's super fast, yes. These are the patterns. Uh -huh. Oops. So you just cut around these with uh, what? A, uh, I use a sharp knife. A sharp knife, mm -hmm. okay. Like but a little can, paring knife. Yes, probably like a, a little paring one. knife, exactly. Okay. All right, we'll do his last ear. And that's why you want it hard to start with so that they don't. So they don't bend yes, down, or, exactly. Because uh -huh. if his ears were soft, they would <laughs> bend. Floppy like a puppy yes, dog. Yes. So there we have it. There's our fox. And that is all there was to it. That's all there is to it. Well, that is amazing. And I'm so glad you made the improvement in it not being as, as stiff of a dough to work with. Yes. I think that'll be better for everybody. Yes, and it tastes wonderful. We also changed the taste. So oh, you did? Yes, okay. So we'll, it would even taste better. We'll try some of these scraps. Yes. Thank you very much, You're Emily. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to select and work with an interior decorator and show how to do a card making technique called double dry embossing.
One of my guests next time is an interior decorator, and she's going to explain how an interior decorator who is involved in your remodeling or building projects can save money in the long run. It's important to have someone you like and trust to help develop your scope of work as well as your financial budget. Another guest on the next show is an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! If you're a crafter, you've probably already learned about using embossing folders, but have you ever tried a technique called double dry embossing? My guest will demonstrate this technique and show several cards she's made with it, and they're really pretty. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a special booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. We are celebrating our 40th year on PBS. This booklet is titled the 40th Anniversary Series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this commemorative booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets we have available online. We would like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter too. Go to kenw.org and click on the sign up now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. We would also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Go to facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. We look forward to hearing from you.